Hey guys, Brandon over at Furches Performance. Uh, as promised, putting together a quick little video explaining what it takes to put a 4T80 behind an LS4. Um, it's been a popular topic of discussion ever since my newest Monte Carlo was finished up. I've been getting a lot of messages and phone calls, so I'm hoping that a quick little video will uh, you know, answer a lot of these questions and give you something to reference with your own build if this is the avenue you choose. Um, so we'll start over here with a standard LS 5.3 aluminum rear wheel drive block and uh, you know an LS4. So right off the bat, the first thing you're gonna notice is the bell housings are significantly different. Um, you know, the rear wheel drive one has a typical small block Chevy bell housing. Um, it's got a provision for a starter, you know, um, and the small metric pattern obviously doesn't. Uh, where you would normally have your starter mounted on a rear wheel drive LS block, it can accommodate it on the LS4 because that's where the transmission uh, actually rests. It runs on the back side of the motor against the firewall. Um, so, your first issue is the starter. Uh, in stock form, the LS4 doesn't have a starter mounted anywhere on it. It's mounted to the 4T65. You know, one of these cute little guys right here. Um, normally you would find the starter provision right here on the bell housing, but this is actually a, a V6 4T65, so it doesn't have that provision. It doesn't have that window. Uh, but for the sake of comparing sizes and whatnot, it's the same transmission, so you get the idea. Um, so that's the first hurdle, starter. You have to find somewhere to put it. So can't put it on the block, can't put it on the transmission. So in my case, I moved it to the oil pan. Uh, this is a stock LS4 oil pan, which already has like this cool little window cut out. And it's my understanding that during research and development, GM had some kind of prototype pan that mounted the starter right here, which is where I got my idea from in the first place. Uh, there's some pictures of it floating around the internet, and that's kind of what I went off of. Um, so what I do is I cut this window back a little bit more. Um, I knock down this side wall. I've got a little billet machine spacer that welds in here perfectly. I box it all back in. I bolt the starter down. Uh, and that's worked really well. I've done it on two cars now. No issues whatsoever. Um, starts fine every single time. Still has good ground clearance. Uh, the first version of this, the solenoid stuck up a little bit, but I've got, I've got it pretty figured out now. Um, everything's nice and tucked, so you know that's the biggest hurdle. If you can get the starter relocated to the oil pan, the rest of this is relatively simple. Um, it's time consuming, but it's simple. Um, so moving on, you know. You've got your starter figured out. You got it bolted to your oil pan. Now you want to figure out how you're going to get the 4T80 behind the LS4. And there's a couple modifications you have to make. First thing is, these 4T80s only came behind North Stars. North Stars do not run the small metric bolt pattern. It's very, very close, but it is not the small metric bolt pattern. Um, this is the small metric bolt pattern. So the majority of these holes work. The dowel locations work. The issue is this lower bolt right here. On a North Star, this mounting provision exists, but it's higher, um, as you can see right here. So that's your first hurdle. The lower bell housing bolt on the LS4 needs to be cut off and removed from the block. Now, what I do is I just follow this contour. That's what I found the easiest. I come in here with a angle grinder, cut this ear off, put a flap disc on it, smooth it back out, and you know, that's what you end up with. Um, clears the transmission case and helps you get it all bolted up. Now, the downside here is that you do lose this bell housing bolt altogether. You can't use it. Um, it's too close to the through hole on the LS4. Uh, there's not enough material. There's this weird machine step, so it's not like you can just drill and tap the hole a little bit lower. Um, so unfortunately, you lose it. I haven't had an issue. That's not to say 
one won't arise. Um, you know, because it is a little weird. I mean, essentially this whole back half of the motor, it's not really secured. You can't run a bell housing bolt here. Um, there's a dowel, which is great, so it helps locate the tranny, but you can't actually run a bolt through here because um, there's no material. You know, the it just stops. You can't drill and tap it because then you would get into the water jacket. There's just there's not enough material there um, to have a thread worth anything that would add any structural support. Um, so the whole backside of the motor, I mean, it does kind of free float there, you know? Um, so for bell housing bolts, you end up with your, your top two, you know, one, two, three here, and four down here where there is also an additional dowel. Um, again, that's worked for me, but I'm on solid motor mounts. You know, if you did this swap with polys or some kind of rubber that you fabricated, I suppose I could see it being an issue if the transmission was able to walk independent of the motor. Um, one way you could solve that is if you made some type of brace for the diff cover to the engine block. Um, there's definitely some mounting provisions there that you could use, and I would definitely recommend it. But, you know, I'm not running one, and like I said, it's worked well for me so far. So, that's the first thing. You gotta get rid of that little, that little arch. Get rid of that lower bell housing bolt. Um, otherwise, you know, the block won't be able to bolt up. It'll hit the tranny case. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the differential cover. Um, you know, the 4080 is just a huge tranny. It's massive compared to, you know, that little guy over there. Um, and with that, you know, is going to come clearance issues. Uh, even when clearanced, you'd be lucky if you can get a piece of paper in between this tranny and the block. Um, you know, it, it's tight. It's tight for sure. Both my cars are like that. Um, it does require grinding not only the transmission case, but some of the area on the engine block as well. Um, what I do, the tranny case is really, really thick um, in that area where that mounting flange is for the differential cover. Um, so I try to take as much material as I can off the transmission before ever touching the engine block with a grinder. Um, I run an 80 grit flap wheel on a four and a half inch Makita grinder and I just follow that contour and just continuously smooth back and forth, back and forth, slowly removing material. Um, and that's, you know, that's it. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a lot of test fitment because obviously you don't want to grind through the tranny case. And you certainly don't want to grind through your engine block. Um, but luckily, there's a lot of material there. Um, you know, as you can see, I windowed this block pretty good, and the area that I ground down had no adverse effects. Um, so I feel good about that. But, uh, you know, to give you a better idea, you know, over here is the area that we're talking about. This boss that stands out. This is where you're going to want to smooth down as much material as you can. Um, and again, it's really thick there, so you don't have to worry about this ear. You don't have to worry about this. It's literally just right here where the diff cover would contact. So same thing, 80 grit flap wheel, four and a half inch grinder, work it back and forth. It's aluminum, so you don't need a lot of pressure. You just gotta go nice and easy, and you just wanna get it so the two aren't rubbing against each other. They're not contacting when the motor and tranny are bolted together. Um, now, Another issue you're gonna run into is down here on the bottom of the tranny case uh, where the pan bolts up. Normally, there's pretty big bosses that stick out here. Um, it's where the bolts actually go up into the tranny case to secure the pan. You gotta grind those down. If you don't, they're gonna rub through the oil pan. I mean, you won't even be able to bolt up the motor. If you've got the oil pan on here, the oil pan's gonna hit those nubs, um, you know, it's just not gonna work. So you definitely have to clearance those two areas. Take note of that. You can clearly see where I ground them. And there's some ribs here that you need to cut out as well. Um, I wish I had another 4080 here so I could show you what it looks like. But I mean, if you reference these pictures, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see the clear grind marks. You can see the clear um, cut marks. 
all that material needs to be removed to clear your oil pan and you know your starter um, as far as training case modifications go those are the big ones um, you do need to drill out one of these bell housing holes I'd be lying to you if I told you I remembered which one it was <laughs> I want to say it was this one. I want to say this hole's not drilled through on the 4T80, but I mean, you'll know. As soon as you bolt your transmission up or attempt to, you're going to see, hey, you know, that's normally where a bell housing bolt would go, and guess I have to open that up. Um, but in a nutshell, that's, you know, that covers it. It's not, it's not that it's difficult to do. It's just a little nerve wracking. You know, you're grinding on the side of your engine block. You're grinding on the side of your transmission case. You don't want to break through either one. Um, you know, you're cutting things off. You know, if it's your first time doing something like this, uh, it can definitely be a little bit intimidating. Uh, but the benefit is you get this giant beefy tranny that's dirt cheap and can hold what seems to be quite a bit of power as opposed to that tiny piece of shit. Um, you know, guys who build these trannies every day will tell you they're garbage. You know, unfortunately, just it is what it is. GM produced a transmission that couldn't even hold enough torque for a six-cylinder, and then they decided it'd be a good idea to put it behind an LS4. Um, so that's really the weak link of uh, any high-power build. And I'm not saying that these 4T80s are a solve-all either, but I put these things through their paces, and... You know, they seem to to hold up. Um, I'm sure there's some weak links that are going to need to be addressed, but it's a viable option for somebody who wants to make big power. And, you know, maybe we're not talking about a uh, W body. Maybe you want to put this in a Fiero. Um, you know, maybe you got a cool Corvair setup you're doing or, you know, I don't know, whatever your vehicle of choice is. But uh, I think it's definitely a good viable four-speed option with some cool gear sets. Um and for a little bit of work, you can have something dirt cheap. You know, who cares? You go out, you blow it up. Okay, go buy another $150 one. It's definitely better than being limited to, uh, you know, the only 4T65 that has to have a window, which you're going to pay a premium for. It had to have come behind an LS4 to get it into your car. Um, when you could have that bad Larry right there. So, hope that clears up some of your questions. If you have any additional you need any tips on what it takes to get that thing in there, uh, give us a call at the shop, send me a message, shoot me an email, whatever it is, and see what we can do to help you out. All right, thanks, guys.